chapter three, Mishnah four. The Mishnah discusses when a person who finds produce must separate maestros from it. The Mishnah will teach that this depends on what type of produce he found and where he found it. Now, the Mishnah. If someone found cut figs on the road, which is a sign that they had been laid out to dry, even if he found them next to a field of cut figs that had been laid out to dry so that it seems clear that they belong to the owner of the field, and similarly, if there is a fig tree with branches hanging over a road and someone found figs beneath it so that it seems clear that they fell from the tree, they are permitted with regard to the issue of stealing, meaning that someone who finds them may take them without being considered stealing, and they are exempt from the maestros obligation, meaning that the finder may eat them without separating maestros. The reason for both of these rulings is that the figs lying in the road are considered ownerless, hefker, because the person who owned them is assumed to have given up hope of getting them back. Ownerless produce is exempt from Meister obligations, as we learned in Mishnah chapter 1, Mishnah 1. The law is different for other kinds of produce. However, if olives or carobs are found on the road beneath an olive or carob tree, they are not considered ownerless and are subject to the Meister obligations. Here, the owner of the tree does not give up hope of getting back his fruits, because they can be identified as having come from his tree even after falling into the road. Therefore, someone who finds them must return them to their owner who is then obligated to separate maestros from them. The next part of the Mishnah discusses when someone who finds completely dried figs must separate maestros from them. These figs were not found next to a field of dried figs, but somewhere else. Since there is no way of identifying the owner, they are considered ownerless, and whoever finds them may keep them. However, this does not necessarily free them from maestros. Ownerless produce is exempt from maestros only if it was ownerless before its processing was completed. Once it was completely processed and the maestros obligation took effect, it remains in effect even if the produce then became ownerless. The question now becomes, when can the finder assume that the figs were lost before they were finished? And when must he be concerned that they were lost afterwards? The Mishnah gives the rule for this. If someone found dried figs, and it is not clear if their processing has been, had been completed by squashing them into a barrel, the law is as follows. If most people in that city have already squashed their dried figs into barrels, the finder must assume that the ones he found had also been squashed before they were lost, and he is obligated to separate maestros from them. But if most people in that city have not yet squashed their dried figs into barrels, he may assume that the ones he found had not yet been squashed, and he is not obligated to separate maestros from them. If he found pieces cut from a cake of figs, he is obligated to separate maestros from them because it is known that they are from something whose processing was completed before they were lost. The Mishnah has concluded its discussion of fruits that were found. The next part of the Mishnah teaches a law about using carobs before their processing has been completed. Regarding carobs, before a person gathered them into a pile on top of the roof, which marks the end of their processing, he may take some down from the roof for, the, for his animal to eat, and he is not obligated to separate maestros from them because he will return the leftover carobs to the roof.